Hey guys, how you doing? This is KevTech here bringing you another video on information technology. I know it's been a while, I uh, upgraded my camera and um, I've been fairly busy but today I'm going to make a video and the video that I'm going to make today is common issues you would deal with on a IT environment doing level 1 support, doing desktop support, technical support, IT support, um, IT support engineer, anything that has to do with level one. So stay tuned for that video and um, welcome back to my channel and I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, let's see if I still have it when it comes to making videos. So, uh, I'm going to talk about common IT issues and IT support, desktop support. So, for today, we're going to see some issues, some common issues. So, one issue you will commonly have would be uh, Outlook's not getting emails or receiving emails. So, the first thing you want to know is if he or she updated her password recently. Because sometimes, you know, your passwords are good for... for uh, Depending on the company you work for, it's good for about three months, most cases. So you want to make sure that they update their password going into, for example, if they go into an iPhone, you will go into settings, scroll all the way down to accounts and passwords if it's the latest iOS, and then go into the email, work email, double click on the work email or click on it one time, then go to account settings and then update the password. and, and um, if it's like an Outlook account or it's just a regular like the regular um, account that you use for for uh, Outlook like the, the regular email client for Apple then you would you would go in there you would update your password uh, make sure you put the domain or whatever the domain is for your company and then hit save and then you should start receiving um, emails after that but if you don't get emails after that then your password is either expired or you're probably locked out of AD Active Directory or or because or something keeps locking you out because sometimes we, we have we have an we have multiple devices like an iPad, an iPhone, a laptop, and they're all connected to the network and sometimes one of those devices that are connected to the network possibly is locking you out because it's still using your old password. So this is the common issues you would see um, on the on the phone itself and then you have other issues like Outlook Outlook will keep prompting you to to um, change your password. You keep trying to change it, and then it pops up again, saying your username and domain. It pops up again, and it keeps doing that over and over again. It's because your password is expired, or you need to update your password. Um, sometimes, your pa if you if you work in, a, in an environment with VPN, it hasn't updated on VPN yet. So sometimes you have to you have to check those things. You could also you also have to check if check if uh, like. Check if it's in the uh, credentials manager, which is really, really a pain sometimes. You, you would have issues with credentials manager. So, for example, I'll show you that right now because I'm, I'm on Windows 10. It should be something called credentials manager. So, sometimes you have these issues where Windows will store your passwords here. Um, it's really... It, 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 it Sometimes it does that. So, when, you, when it restores your password, it... it it messes with your account. So if you have a Windows 7 or 10 machine, it usually messes with your account. So you just make sure that, that their old password is not cached anywhere on the computer or anywhere on any of, any of their devices. Um, so yeah, that, that's how you would fix it. And sometimes, um, worst comes to worst, you would recreate the user profile because it just doesn't work. Um, and that, 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 that obviously, if you recreate a user profile, the quickest quickest way to do that is if you go to the start menu, you go to control panel, um, you change the category to large icons, you go to mail, open up mail, and then you create add, you create a new profile, you call it like test, click OK, hit OK, and then click the profile that you're trying to use, and then after that, you should be good after that, and obviously since you're creating a new profile, it will upload their emails for the first time, so don't be scared if their profile, you know, their profile is, uh, has no emails, obviously. It takes time. It updates your emails, updates your calendar invites, updates your address book. Everything is updated again. So, 
that would be some of the issues you would you would you would commonly see you know, if you're doing like level one support. Another issue you would commonly see, which is the the the, the I guess like the the PC tech or the desktop support ones that you will commonly see is this one, which is which is my mouse and keyboard are not working. So let's check the physical cable first. This is the, that's like the really basic thing is check the cable. Um, plug it into a different port. Maybe maybe the port is bad, or maybe it just it's just not accepting the drivers on that port. Um, actually, you have to wait sometimes because if it's a Bloomberg keyboard, you have to download drivers, and it downloads it on the back end, on the background. So sometimes you would get like you would get like uh, like over here on the on the right hand side, you would get like uh, it's like downloading drivers right now. So. That's like something you should check out for if, if it's doing it. Just leave it alone. It should download the mouse and keyboard. Last last resort would be, you know, obviously, obviously just giving them a new keyboard because the one that they have is not set, is not taking it in any port. Um, sometimes restarting the computer will fix that problem. Um, another time would be, it would be like uh, going into device manager and actually re removing the, the device. If it's like a HP mouse or what what have you, you go here and and you remove it, or you go to uh, you go to devices and printers and see if it's actually physically installed in the control panel and see if it's if it's installed. To I have a mouse here that's installed. You can just you can just right click and remove the device, and that's pretty much what what you would do if you're having that weird issue. Another issue would would be. Uh, the website is not working. Like, there's a website not working. So, like, um, ask them, ask them to check the website on their on their phone. And if it works on their phone, then we know that it's a proxy issue or it's a it's a firewall block that we're doing on our end. So you you wanna you wanna make sure that that it when I basically it's not being blocked by us first. If it works on our on our end, then obviously you know they're not they're gonna complain about anything. But if it's being blocked, then um, it's probably like a signature error, a certificate error. Maybe you gotta add the the the, the device to trusted zones, for example. Uh, I'll show you right now what I'm talking about. Uh, you would go to the gear on the on the top right hand side, Internet Options, and Trusted Sites. Click Sites, and then you would add the site to to this. So like, if you work for a hedge fund, you need to add the site here, so the, so the site is trusted, so you could connect to that website. Um, Sometimes it, it would be like you're using like firewall or you're using a Barracuda. Barracuda blocks a website, so maybe the website is is being blocked by by one of your one of your firewall applications and stuff like that. So make an exception for it. Um, obviously, you need the proper approval for that. So you get manager approval or higher VP approval higher, and then once you get the approval, then it, if it works, it works. Sometimes it doesn't work if you have cookies and cache store on the on the computer so you might want to delete your cookies and cache and that usually solves the problem so that would be uh, that would be something you want to try first before before doing it because if it, if it works for your computer and it doesn't work for them then there's something wrong with their physical computer so you could delete you could delete a uh, browser history cookies and cache and we could reset um, IE if it doesn't work because some of these websites require IE because of server light or because of Java or some other stuff, so you want to just reset IE to its physical settings or default settings. And if it works on Chrome, obviously, then you would you would do the same thing on Chrome. So you just hit the three tabs, you go to history, go to history again, then clear browser history. Um, if it works on IE, but it doesn't work on Chrome, then you want to clear cookies and cache on Chrome. If it still doesn't work, then you go and hit about Chrome and and check for updates maybe it's out of date or something and maybe maybe the version you have is out of date and it's not working with the website so there's a couple of things you could check before you're doing every this is, this is how you troubleshoot if you're having all these weird issues another issue would be oh my internet is not working why is my internet not working I can't get online ah the agony I can't get online so so this one is, is not it's nothing it could be something network related Usually it's because uh, there's like a firewall or network change was done on the weekend or or sometimes it's not even like this is like the most simplest thing and maybe the internet cable is now plugged in on the back of the PC. So before you do anything, 
check to see if the internet is plugged in. Check to see if you see an ember and green light on the back of the computer. If you see that and it can't connect to anything, then there's something wrong with with uh, with their computer. You might you don't want to reboot first. So this is, like this is the, these are the couple common things you would do if if you're having that that weird issue. So the first thing you would do is you go to CMD, open up the command line, check and type IP config. You have an IP address. You have no IP address. Well, then there's something wrong with the computer. So do IP, IP config, um, IP config flush DNS. Maybe you have to flush DNS or IP config renew or release, etc., etc. If that doesn't work, then then um, it could be a couple of issues. It could be maybe an Active Directory. Maybe they, you ran out of IP addresses and you need to add another IP address. And the, the, the user is uh, no longer, the, the computer is no longer taking an IP address. So sometimes they might, they might need, they, you might need to check uh, Active Directory and see if there's any more IP addresses. Maybe you ran out of IP addresses. It could, it, that could be it. Some, sometimes, worst case scenario, you might have to reboot because maybe it, it lost, it lost connection to DNS. So domain name service. So if you reboot, it fixes that issue. So it could do that as well. Um, rare cases, the network card is dead. You, you, your NIC card is dead on that computer and it just doesn't work. So you might have to change the NIC card. Um, uh, most people will reboot if it doesn't work. If the reboot doesn't work and there's something physically wrong with the computer, it just doesn't grab an IP, then um, worst, worst, case, worst case scenario, just give them another computer. But that shouldn't happen. If it does happen in your envi work environment, then you have to you physically uh, should physically check your hardware, your hardware, your hardware or Active Directory, because it should it should grab a new fresh IP address. If you release and renew, you don't you shouldn't have to reboot. Like reboot is like the last resort. Getting someone a new computer is a last resort too. Unless it's like something physically wrong with the computer, then you would give them a new computer. You shouldn't have to do that. So. This one is uh, obviously common as well in IT support. I need access to a network drive. So depending on the IT environment, you know, you get approval first. If it's like an SMD and he, he does give the approval for everything, then you give him access immediately. You don't, you know, you have, you have, we, have, we have to wait it out. We have compliance and we have all these other things and you have to get approval. You don't just do it. You get in trouble by your manager. You know, you just don't do it. You do have to get approval for everything. And, and it has to be written like an email approval. It's not like you, you do it and then you, you, you expect it to work. You know, you don't, don't, don't do that. But you have to get approval for everything. Depending on your environment, obviously you get approval for these things. So um, what, you would want, what, what I would do or what usually what I do, I'm like, okay, so you want, what, what, what drive do you want? You want the S drive, the T drive, whatever. You could call it whatever letter you want. But hey, I want the S drive. Okay. Who who has who has access to the S drive? Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy has access to the S drive. Okay, good. Is it the same thing that you need access to? Yes, I need access to the same thing to all those paths. Yes. Okay. Awesome. We'll get approval. Once I get approval, I add him to that DR, that distribution group, and he should be good after that security group. He should be good after that. Um, obviously, you know there 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 are um, you know obviously there there are some. Sometimes there are issues where they just want specifically, they want a specific folder only. Then obviously you do special permissions for that and you create a special security group for that one person, that one user. Then you would, you would, you know, just give them access to that one folder. You won't give them access to the whole damn thing. That's just, that's just too much permissioning. So, too much access. So you don't do that. Um, when you, when you do give someone access to, to a, a security group, obviously they have to do a GP update on their computer. So you would you would go to the command line and gp update slash force. So it, it updates the policy. It grabs the, the it grabs a fresh policy that you just pushed in, and it gives them access to that share drive. So and and pretty much that's how you do it. And then and then they would have to log off and log back in. Like, oh, I need you to log off, log back in. Oh, I need you to restart your computer. It's the same thing. Just restart. Um, Restart the computer, and and then they should have access to that to that S drive or whatever. Uh, and that's it. That's pretty much it. That, that's the that's uh, something you will commonly see in level one supports. Give me access to this S drive. Give me access to this T drive. Um, if you if you want to find out if you want to find out what letters they need, or you want to find out you want to find out um, oh this uh, Jimmy has access to the S drive. 
What's the path directory? Can I find can, me? Let me talk to Jimmy. You remote it to Jimmy's machine. You type net net user, and then when you type net user, so, uh, it should tell you what 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 drives they have and um, what path directories they have. So it's good it's good to check that if you need if you need to know what what drives they need and stuff like that. So all right, this one printer is not working. If it's a USB printer. Shut off the printer, remove the printer, so you go to control panel, devices and printers, right click, remove the device, USB, uh, USB printer, shut off the device, remove the printer, reboot it again, let it reinstall the drivers again of the printer, and then have them do a test page by right clicking, by right -clicking on the printer and then hit test page, printer properties test page, or Go into a Word document and just print out a test page um, if it's a USB printer. Um, network printer, remove the printer, add it again. Printer still not working. Printer still not working. Go to someone else, check to see if they have the same printer. Have them print. It works for them. And it doesn't work for this person. There's something wrong with their computer. Um, doesn't work. Uh, check the... Check the um, print spooner. So you go to services, and we're gonna open up services. Go to print spooner. You go to stop. You start again. Hit OK. And then that's it. And then that, that's what you have to do. And then that's it. And then try having them print again. If that doesn't work. Another thing you want to do is let's see if this computer has it. It might not have it. System uh, this, for Windows 7, disable system while 64, kill it, and then reopen it again. Have them print again, and it should fix that issue. Um, if, that, if it still doesn't work, then you have to go to the print server and just check to see if Maybe a job is hung up, or maybe there's a job that someone tried to print and it's messed up and it's, and it's not letting them print for some reason. Um, obviously, that's if everyone, nobody could print in that printer, and then maybe there's a job stuck somewhere. Um, have them, have them, uh, have them try to print again. If that, it, it, it could be that. It could also be, it could also be other other things like the printer's out of paper. I mean, it's just like like little like silly things, you know, like silly things. Printer's out of paper. Or, or they need toner in that in that printer, or or there's a paper jam, and it gives you that error message: "Oh, paper jam! Take the jam out of here before you could print again." And stuff like that. So that those are those are those are the common issues you would you would see in 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 uh, IT support level one. Those are the issues you would see in. All right. So next one, I can't remote to my work computer. So check to see if the computer is online. In some cases, people leave the office. They go into Citrix, they remote into their PC, and that PC is probably not even on. They probably shut it off by accident, and they think that it's, they think they, it's on for some reason. So you might have to go to the, go to the 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 floor, whatever, and turn on their computer. That's probably what it is. Um, some cases, users are not in remote desktop groups, which allows them to remote into their machine. So you could check that by going into computer management. Going into local users and groups, going into groups, going into remote management. It says right here, remote desktop users, sorry, wrong one. It says right here, members in this group are granted the right to log in remotely to this desktop. So, you add them to this group, search your name, add them, hit OK, and then they should be able to remote in. Voila, magic. It's like, oh, I'm able to log in now. Yay. I'm like, yes, got you. Uh, another one would be, uh, the computer is on, the computer is on, but they can't remote in through DNS. So they, they put the name of the computer, the, the, the name of the actual computer, and it doesn't work. And then as a workaround, you could give them the IP address of that computer and have them remote into the computer using the IP instead of the, instead of the um, actual name of the computer. Another issue you would have is I want, I want to... I want to use my computer as the full screen, so you will go into, uh, put the name here, show options, you hit save, go to display, 
use all monitors, use full screen large, and then hit OK, hit save, and then hit connect. That was, that's like one of the one another like one of the common issues you would see is is that. Um, and that's it. And then you, if they, if you if you could remote into their computer and they can't remote into it, it's because uh, maybe a session is hung on remote desktop. Maybe it doesn't want to pop up. Remote desktop doesn't want to pop up. That's an issue you would see. You have to kill their session in Zen app servers. Maybe maybe their computer is having issues with connectivity, or maybe maybe uh, they have the they have the wrong version of Citrix receiver because in certain in certain work environments you need a certain version for it to work. Um, and just remote into the computer using using go to assist team viewer whatever you have and just see what error messages they're getting and then troubleshoot it based on that and that's it it's pretty much what you would do um, you just see what error messages they're getting um, check check uh, check their VPN maybe they use VPN and with VPN they remote into their computers so there's some um, companies that do that so you can check that as well uh, make sure they're part of the right groups and then that's about it for this one so uh, this is phone issues we're going into phone issues now so my phone won't turn on like my, my Cisco phone my Avaya phone my Mitel phone whatever phone company you have my phone won't turn on check the physical cable most companies run um, voice over IP so check the physical cable maybe he didn't log into the phone Maybe it needs to, maybe it's running an update or firmware update that you don't know about. Maybe the port is dead. So maybe where it's plugged into the bottom of the floor, you know, you plug in out the internet cables, maybe that port is dead. Or maybe it's not physically patched. Or maybe they just got relocated to another another office or another location or another place. Because when you know when you relocate, sometimes these ports they haven't been tested or they haven't been checked. And that that, that port is probably configured for only internet, but not for not for VLAN, voice over IP, maybe. So th th these are things you have to check. Um, obviously, if you're the IT guy and you're very organized, then you would you would plug in the phone, you check everything, make sure it's working, make sure they don't have any issues. So then, when they come in Monday morning, their phone is logged in. They have no issues with their phone. Um, some cases, the phones will die. If the phone is if the phone is dead, dead, then the phone is dead. You have to give them a new phone. Um, in some other cases, it's, it's uh, uh, maybe maybe you ran out of maybe maybe you ran out of um, IP addresses or something. It could it could be that too. Um, maybe maybe that port is just physically bad. Just plug into another port. It's like port A, port B, port C, port D. Plug it into another port. So these are issues that you would you would see that are common for this in, for this uh, environment. So um, uh, then this is another common one. Level one again. My audio is not working on my on my computer. Oh no, I can't listen to YouTube videos. I can't watch YouTube videos, or I can't watch this movie. I'm just I'm just I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, the speakers aren't working. Check. Uh, the, 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 this is the most common one. Check to see what the default sound is on the device. It might be something different. So, uh, you right click on the on the like the volume settings. If it's a Windows 10, you go to sounds. And then you just see here what are the default default settings. If it's the wrong one, then obviously the sound is not going to work. So um, try a different USB port. Maybe the port is bad. Uh, make sure the drivers are downloaded for that. Uh, again, check devices and printers. Maybe that's not. It, maybe the drivers just failed to load. Um, maybe maybe the computer doesn't have. Um, the right drivers, or maybe it doesn't have drivers installed for for the for the motherboard to recognize sound. Um, you might have to download the drivers for that specific vendor or specific computer. It, it could be that as well. Um, and um, and then sometimes these 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 headphones or speakers they they plug and play, but in some cases they're not. So they you might have to go to their official website and download the drivers. So that, that's. That's pretty much one of the issues you are. Maybe it's not on. It's like common issues you would see with, with audio. Um, this is one is this one is a little little intense because this one is this is like the bread and butter of of of, of people that work in uh, finance companies that their outlook's not working, uh, Word is not working, Excel is not working, uh, and it it, it's, it it becomes really bad because they're trying to. They're trying to do numbers. They're trying to do schematics. They're trying to import numbers. They're trying to 
trying to put investment deals and do all these crazy deals and and it, their, their stuff is not working so they're just extremely frustrated with you so and it's, it's not they understand it's not your fault but the thing is that it has to work especially when when you're going through these business deals um in, in, in that work environment for a hedge fund or a real estate company you're going through all these crazy deals at, at, like at these months or this timeline that you have and these things just don't work so you have to you, you know you, you obviously as a as a as a person or as a user that's trying to make money to the company and your stuff doesn't work you're gonna get frustrated you know you, it, it, it's just gets it really frustrating so obviously you go to task manager you kill the process maybe you don't have enough memory on that computer or maybe they have multiple applications running obviously you would you would go into uh, task manager you would go to the, the app and just end task Windows 7 Go to excel.exe, kill it. Word.exe, kill it. Outlook.exe, kill it. Um, uh, see how, see what version of of uh, what version of Microsoft they're running. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe they they have a a, a, a 32 bit, and they have uh, 12 or 12 and more gigabytes of RAM, and and since it's 32 bit, it only reads 4 gigs of RAM. Versus it being 64-bit, where it reads all the memory on the computer. So you might have to check that too. Uh, it's probably nothing wrong with the computer. It's just the version of uh, of of uh, Microsoft you have installed on the computer. Um, other cases, it it, it could be a uh, it, it could be a uh, uh, a corrupt file on Excel, a corrupt file on Word. See if you could open it up yourself. Other cases would be uh, um, maybe maybe. Uh, Maybe uh, um, that that file that file has a macros enable stuff on it, and maybe your environment blocks macros, or maybe it has to be done a specific way for that file to work, or maybe or maybe a column is corrupted on Excel that's causing Excel to crash, or maybe there's a there's a there's a, a plugin. You know how we have all these add-ins like Cap IQ or Bloomberg or or uh, workspaces or what have you maybe these plugins are causing it to crash so maybe open up word word in safe mode will open up excel in safe mode um, open up outlook in safe mode maybe there's a plugin that's causing it to crash <clears throat> worst case scenario you would you would uh, you would run a repair on Microsoft suite you shouldn't have to do that but that's like worst case scenario just run a repair on it um, Worst case scenario, it will it will it will obviously make you reboot. So you have to reboot if you're doing a repair. Every time you do a repair, it always makes you reboot on Microsoft. Uh, I, I don't know why it just does that. So um, this is what you would see. You would see crazy things like my Outlook's not connected because um, um, uh, your password hasn't been updated or uh, my my um, my count my my uh, <coughs> excuse me. My, I'm starting to send an email, and my font is all messed up on Outlook, or, or, um, for example, like, oh my, where's my reading panel at? I don't, I don't see the reading panel anymore. Like, right? the preview panel, where is it at? No, it doesn't work. Um, every time I open Outlook and I do this one task, it crashes my whole Outlook. Um, every time I try to drag and drop a file and a new email, it crashes my Outlook. Every time I I try to attach this file, it crashes my Outlook, you know, and then that, that's the case where you would see if there's any plugins that are, are causing problems with the application. So that those those are those are those are really important things to check. Check the plugins, try to open the safe mode. Don't don't do a repair it's like the last resort, don't do a report uh, repair. Um, check to see what they're trying to do. Check to see if other people are having that same issue. Because if everyone else is having that same issue, and obviously it's a plugin that's affecting everybody. Um, so just just check all those things before you before um, you run a repair, yeah. and make sure they have enough memory for the because you know Excel Excel with Bloomberg takes up a lot of resources. So just make sure there's enough memory for these things, um, and make sure they have the right version. 64 bits it has to be 60. If it's 32 bit, it's not. It'll keep crashing over and over again. If they have like like 32 gigs of RAM, obviously you know, and, and you have a, a 32 bit. Microsoft Suite is not going to see all the resources, so it's going to keep crashing. So, so just put them in the right version and make sure they're in the right version, and then that 
that would that would be like a like a stress reliever. I had I had this one issue with with a guy that everyone in his department opened this Excel file on the share drive and it never crashed for anyone, but it always crashes for him. So uh, I'm like, you know what? Let me let me let me let me check your let me check your let me check your your profile. Let me check your your account. Let me see. And ah, this is what it is. You have a 32 bit. You have a 32 bit Excel. That's why. All right. So when can I uh, install 64 bit? Oh, you going you going to lunch? What time are you going to lunch? 12. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a snapshot of all the plugins you use for Excel, and uh, I'm gonna save it somewhere. And I'm going to, because maybe because sometimes these plugins are incompatible, and you might have to uninstall those plugins and reinstall the 64-bit version of it. So you want to launch at 12? Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a screenshot of all your plugins that are installed, and I am going to install 64-bit. So I have to. So if you know, obviously you can't just install Excel. It's a whole Microsoft suite. So I have and stop stop recording. I had to make a second part of this, yeah. So, I had to I had to remove everything. I had to remove everything, and I finally I got it to go in there, and and um, I finally got it to to work for him. And he was able to open that Excel file. So, so yeah, these are the issues you would have. Let's go to the next one. So, um, uh, more Outlook issues. So, Outlook issues with with end users. Search functionality is not working. Um, you go to services. Uh, it should be called Windows Search. So Windows Search, you stop and re you stop it, and then you run it again. It should fix it. Uh, control Panel. Index Options. Go to uh, Index. Uh, advance, rebuild, and delete index. That will fix the issue too. I'll look at our opening Excel files. Maybe change the default default files uh, to Excel. I don't. Um, some silly things like, oh, I need to make an out of office reply. You know how to do that? Maybe passwords expire. Um, change the. I, I felt I felt spelling right there. I forgot to put a G in there, but. Change view settings, uh, create a rule for Outlook, um, add calendars, inbox, and contacts. Maybe they want access to a specific calendar or a specific contact. You go into the calendar, you right click on the calendar, hit properties, go to the security groups, give them editor rights, full rights, rewrites only, um, whatever access they need, you know, get approval for it. Uh, meeting is not updating, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, for meetings not updating, maybe they they need to uh, they need to resync their profile. Maybe you have to recreate their profile. Or oh, if they have a share calendar, maybe you have to delete the share calendar, reopen it again. Calendar not updating on their phone. Uh, if it's an iPhone, you go to settings. You go to accounts and passwords. You go to the email account. You go to calendar. You want to tick calendar, retick it again. Uh, delete from phone. Yes, delete from phone. Tick it again, and that's it. And it should fix that issue. Um, that's for uh, an iPhone. Same with a, with an Android device. Untick it, retick it. You should fix it. So, computer is slow. When was the last time you restarted your computer? Uh, how much memory does it have? Obviously, you don't ask them that. You check that how much memory they have. Maybe the hard drive is bad. Give them an SSD. Scan for viruses. Run the latest Windows updates. Defrag the hard drive. Um, Remove error settings, set performance to max, maybe that'll fix it, but it changes the background, it changes everything. So for that, you would go to your properties on the computer, advanced system, performance, and adjust for best performance. It would delete all of this, and then you hit OK, and hit apply. Um, Change, upgrade the user's machine. Obviously, you schedule a time to rebuild their machine. Um, you schedule a time to change their machine. Oh, you want on lunch right now? I'm gonna do it for you right now. After lunch, I'll do it for. I'll back up everything. If you have to back anything up, back everything up. Switch the computer. Have them log in. Have them test everything. Keep the old computer for about a week, week and a half. They're good to go. Rebuild that other computer. Change the hard drive and re-image it. And that's pretty much it for that.
Common Adobe Acrobat issues. Run or repair on, you know, Adobe Acrobat. Can open PDF files, change the default to open to PDF. Um, I, I keep telling you changing default profiles, uh, default um, applications. So you just type default applications, default programs. Set your default programs. So this is for that. Choose default programs by file type. On Windows 10, you would do this. Um, so it would be PDF files. Obviously, you would you would go to PDF and change it to whatever you need to change it to. Uh, HTML would be Chrome. If it's uh, if it's Excel, X, uh, XML files, it would be Excel, etc., etc. So you would do that there. User can print from PDF. Um, map the printer again, maybe. Um, users won't users Adobe won't open, run and repair, reinstall, and then that, that's it. Those are the common issues of Adobe. And Adobe is really important for a lot of people because they sign stuff, they they graph pictures and videos and stuff. Um, they put stuff in Adobe, the, like Adobe Premiere and, and Adobe CC CC uh, and all this crazy stuff that they do with Creative Cloud. So you you know obviously these things you run and repair, reinstall them. Uh, maybe there's something wrong with their profile account and a couple of stuff like that. Those are common issues you would see. So, add-ins not working. Um, remove the add-in, re-add it again. Remove it in the remove it in the control panel. So if it's an add-in, just uninstall it, reinstall it, run a repair on the add-in. Um, make sure make sure the add-in is able to open. Um, Maybe the maybe the computer is corrupted. Maybe if I log in and the add-in works for me and it doesn't, maybe his user profile, maybe his maybe his account is corrupt. Then we have to delete his profile. Um, make sure it's not make sure it's not uh, uh, disabled. Maybe the add-in is disabled. So uh, let me go into Word and show you what I'm talking about. You're probably what is he talking about? So you go to File. Uh, I'm gonna go into Options, Add-ins. See disable items, maybe it's disabled somewhere. Uh, check comms add-ins, maybe it's not check mark, maybe it's not there. Um, word add-ins, maybe it's not there. For Excel, it's the same thing. Excel, maybe comms add-ins, add-ins, maybe it's not, maybe it's disabled or something, so. Delete the user's profile. Maybe that computer's corrupt. The user's profile. If that's the case, just give him a new computer. Don't delete the whole profile. That's that's crazy. Just give him a new computer. Yeah. So then, that, that those are the common issues you would see with add-ins. Um, website can't run because it requires Java. Use IE. It requires Adobe Flash. Use Chrome. Um, Chrome has Flash by default, but they Chrome changed the rules recently on uh uh. Chrome Adobe Flash. So, as of as of 2020, Flash will no longer work. Um, they changed the rules on this. So, if you wanna if you wanna enable Flash, you click the little lock. You click Allow, and then it's gonna make you reload it, and you reload it. Um, if you need to add other stuff to it, you hit Site Settings, and then you add it right here. So, that's pretty much what it is. And then, you know, Java's not working, you just reinstall Java, or maybe you need to make an exception or something like that. All right. My emails, and I just went over this. My emails are not working on my phone. Update your password. Maybe passwords expire. Check on ID to see if they're locked out. Are they connected to Wi Fi? Maybe the Wi Fi, maybe they're connected to Wi Fi and it doesn't work. Maybe take them off of Wi Fi and then have them update the password. Um, remove the email account completely and re add it again. Restart the the device, you should fix the issues. So those are the issues you might, this is the last one, I believe. Those are the issues you would have. Um, monitor not working. Tell the user to press the power button. Is the computer on? Maybe the computer is not on. Um, check the physical cable. Maybe the cable is not, is not good. Check the cable. There's a DVI, VGA, display cable that's plugged into the back of the computer. Plug it into another port. If that doesn't work, Check the cable on the monitor. Maybe the monitor, um, the plug of the monitor, is maybe it's, maybe it's bad. Maybe the monitor is bad itself. You don't know. It could be a, in in some cases the graphics card is corrupted. Maybe it doesn't work. Download the latest drivers. Um, 
Maybe the cable got kicked out by accident. Um, this, that's a lot of common issues you see. Maybe the computer's not on. <laughs> Display's not working, computer's not on. You know, obviously, they both have to be on. Um, so those are, those are the common things you would see on a, on a monitor. And then that's it. That's uh, that's pretty much it. So um, if you like this video, rate, comment, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you don't like it, obviously, give me a thumbs down. Um, I'm going to be making videos now. I'm back to my regular schedule. I've been really busy. I'm sorry about, you know, not making videos. Um, my next my next video will be on Bloomberg and Bloomberg technology. So Bloomberg, Bloomberg is a financial application that everyone uses in the finance industry, hedge funds. So I'm going to go over that. I'm just going to go over how to troubleshoot that for people that are trying to use Bloomberg Terminal. So that will be my next video. I hope everyone has a great day. Happy Sunday and um, enjoy the rest of your day. And thanks for watching. Take care.